you know, I did not want to make a negative video, but here we are. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Chase and what have I got for you today? You know, I haven't done a dynamite review in a minute and I'm trying to figure out how I want to proceed with all that, but I did intend on doing one this week and then I watched dynamite. And I'm not saying this was a terrible episode of TV or the worst dynamite ever or anything like that. But my God, it seemed so nothing. And you know, sometimes that's fine, like to have a little nothing episode of your weekly wrestling TV show, you know, where not much happens, it's a bit of a sleeper. But All In is four weeks away. All In is four weeks away. And I'll say that again, just in case by chance, Tony Khan sees this video. All in is four weeks away. So I got to wonder, what are we doing? And not only that, but they're doing all out a week after. Tony, please book some matches and get something good going. Please. like. In a nutshell, this dynamite was, okay, we had AR Fox turning heel, upsetting Darby and going with Swerve in the embassy. We had a pre-tape with Adam Cole and MJF with Roddy running in and MJF promising Cole a rematch for the title. Then there was a pre-tape with FTR, though they had done a promo on Collision. Then we had what I can only describe as a bad Jack Perry promo, which featured Jerry Lynn. I'm actually currently writing a whole video on Jack's heel turn, so I'll leave it at that. And then Don Callis setting up a match for next week where Jericho teams with Takeshita against Sammy and Danny. And then later on, the rest of the JAS walked into his locker room and told him, you don't care about us. No shit, guys. Yeah, he doesn't. And now the BCC are feuding with the Lucha Bros and best friends. Like, okay. Maybe Moxley and Cassidy are building to something. Now, none of these matches were bad and there was nothing like egregious on the show. There was nothing that made me mad, but I was just like, Tony, we're a month away from the biggest show in the company's history and what's on the table at the minute. And, you know, ever since All In was announced, fans have been speculating on what the card could be they've been booking their own card their dream matches debating who should be on the show everything and the sheer size of the show means that people are going to have really high expectations for it and I have high expectations for it and I'm sure it will be awesome because AEW do have a really good track record with pay-per-views I think I've only been to one pay-per-view that I would say was lackluster And that was double or nothing this year. But I wish it was being built like WrestleMania. I wish it felt like it was going to have this massive combination of storyline matches. But then I also think, is it even possible to do that when you've booked to have all out the week after? So what does it look like we're getting here? Okay. We have the Adam Cole MJF storyline. Now, I will totally admit that it's not for me. That is just my preference. That is just my taste, right? I thought what they did on Dynamite this week was the best thing that I'd seen them done because they were being more serious and that's more what I'm into than dance breaks or whatever. But I get that it's totally over and I give them that. Would I have stuck the world champion in like a comedy tag team storyline before the biggest show in the company's history? Like, absolutely not. But they did and we're here. And at least the fans are reacting really well to the MJF Cole pairing. So who's MJF's opponent for All In? Okay, he's given Cole the rematch. I mean, I guess it's going to be him at All In. And cool like I'm waiting to see how they do that breakup and all because it's really important and I think their breakup 
has to be really good to justify the storyline. It can't be something silly. It can't be something that makes Cole look like a fool. So that's going to be for me, like a hard one to pull off. So if we get MJF and Cole at all in, hopefully once this tag match and collision is over with, we can start really building towards that. But then who's MJF facing it all out? A rematch with Cole? I hope not. Maybe Punk, if something happens between him and MJF when MJF and Cole appear on Collision tomorrow night. I'm filming this on Friday. And I know that Collision could bring us the answer to one of these questions about the all the all in card. But we'll need a really good build for that. And MJF and Punk would be up against what they did last time. So like, let's look at some other people and I'm concentrating just on like the Dynamite team. Kenny Omega. Okay, my first thought, of course, for who Kenny Omega is going to face at All In was Will Ospreay. And I thought, okay, that's really good because they already have a built-in storyline. There's not much you need to do to make that seem like a huge match given how their past two matches are for some people two of the best wrestling matches they've ever seen. I know they are for me. Osprey, you know, probably won't won't make a TV appearance till the G1 is over. So I was like, right, that's a cool, that's cool. Then the report from Fightful comes out that it's not Kenny getting the match with Osprey at all in, because I guess New Japan want to keep that for themselves, which another thing I totally understand. It's Chris Jericho. So Jericho is doing this storyline with Don Callis where him and Don Callis are friends and it's a whole callback to like 30 years ago when they used to train together. Great. So my options for who Jericho would face when I was thinking about this before the Fightful article were all right, maybe Takeshita if they do a turn there, maybe Sammy Guevara or Danny like finally get a moment but no it looks like he's doing this whole Don Callis thing with Takeshita rubbed in with the breakup of the JS the final breakup of the JS and he gets to be the guy that faces Will Ospreay so all this isn't even to you know, really put over to cash down a match with him or Sammy or Danny. It's he wants to be the guy in the ring with Will Ospreay. Right. And uh, I don't know. I mean, look, I'm not salivating for that one. At one point, I thought it was going to be Jericho versus Sting. And I think a lot of people thought that. And honestly, I wasn't high on that either, especially when they did the multi-man matches avoid um using both of them i was like okay if you're building up to big singles matches at all in it's kind of dumb to have them you know in the ring together before that but at least i was thinking oh wow they're starting this one early they're going to tell a big storyline between jericho and sting no that was just a stopgap that's not where we're going i guess omega could have a match with Takeshita um at at all in and I mean that could be good but then is he gonna be like sucked into all this like Jericho stuff when he's got his own thing with Callus Kal- and Takeshita like I mean I truly don't know it'd be good if they could actually move stuff forward instead of just doing these Chris and Dawn hang out together segments let's move on Young Bucks absolutely anyone's guess who they'll work with after the Blackpool Combat Club story see him for Hangman Page Honestly, no idea. The women's division. Okay, we have two prominent British wrestlers, Jimmy Hader and Soraya. Jimmy is injured and that sucks. And I hope she's back ASAP. I hope she doesn't miss this moment. Soraya has done absolutely nothing. It seems as soon as Jimmy got injured, they couldn't be bothered continuing the storylines they were doing. Like Britt Baker's storyline at the minute seems to be her just going, hey, everyone, I'm still here. But the booking of the women's division is a whole bigger problem than just for this pay-per-view. And that's something I'm currently writing about um, at the minute. And it's 
it's a dire thing to like to dive into how the women's division has been booked in, in AEW and the use of talent that they have. Tony definitely has a problem of only finalizing things or ramping it all up on the week or two before pay-per-view. But I did naively think that All In would be different because it's such a historic show. Like they've sold around 70,000 tickets. They're mentioning it on Dynamite. The awareness is there. We're waiting for it. We're rapid for it. So let's get this bill started and let's not present another show like we got this week. I mean, when this show was announced, it was like the biggest news and everyone was so excited. And it's been a while, but the hype has really died down because there's nothing to talk about. They sold a huge amount of tickets. And it's like they're resting on that. Well, we sold a ton of tickets. We don't have to put any more effort into anything. And it's like, if you've got that many people coming to a show, please give them a show that they will remember. Don't just dine off the fact that we're all going to be at Wembley and be like, isn't this amazing? We're at this huge wrestling show at Wembley. But you want people to walk away from it and say, yeah, AW is the best thing ever. They presented these brilliant matches for us. And I was so excited to see, I couldn't wait to see like insert match here. It's just not enough to say the show is huge because it's in Wembley. Imagine if like the biggest pop star, I, mean, I guess that's Taylor Swift or like Beyonce said, like they're going to hold the biggest gig ever. And you were so excited and thought it was going to be so historic. And they come on the stage and they're like, hey, everyone, um, I know you were all expecting all those songs that you know that you're really invested in. But instead, I'm just going to do some new material that I lost, that I wrote last week uh, and just give you that, you know, be like, um thanks <laughs> and with all out being a week later I'm definitely very worried that Tony is capable of booking two big pay-per-views one after the other and I think he's so stretched right now with Dynamite Rampage Collision and Ring of Honor and you only have to look at the recent Ring of Honor pay-per-view announcements to see that and yes I know there were injuries and on his next call Tony will probably once again talk about all those injuries in 2022 that wrecked Forbidden Door but I mean, you should have some plan B's or stuff that you're working with. And another point, we don't even know how we can watch All In if we're not going to All In. They haven't even announced that. But, you know, I guess that's a whole thing with Warner and whatever. But that's just wild, too. And I just worry that the card is going to be, you know, filled with people and matches that they're just doing to give that person a match because it's our biggest show ever. But... <sighs> I just wish they were building it well and hyping it up. I really, really do. So all of this was just to say, like, let's just get this all in card finalized. Please, Tony, just be conscious of the size and the importance of the show and give us a card that feels worthy of an, of an event. Give us a card that feels like, yes, this event should be in Wembley. And give us weekly TV that makes us excited to see it. No more just like rushing things forward at the end like is so often done with the pay-per-views. So yeah, I'm sorry for the rant, but I just had to get off my chest. I know All In is going to be awesome. I'm really excited for it. But I just, I can't believe we're this close to it and we got no card and no one's even talking about that there's a pay-per-view the week after all in any way. So we're essentially trying to book two pay-per-view cards at once. And we've got one match for it. And that's for the Chicago show. And I'm going to be at All Out as well, by the way, because I'm just wild like that. Yeah, Tony, book us a good card. Please, please, please. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Go follow me on all social media, links in descriptions. I'll see you next time. Hopefully it'll be a happier video. It might not be because I am working on one about Jungle Boy's heel turn and why it just ain't hitting. Until next time, bye.